Have you noticed that most materials soften as the temperature goes up? But not rubbers. Rubbers often actually get stiffer as temperature increases. So today I'm going to talk about what's causing rubbers to behave so unusual and odd compared to many other materials. So let's get started by talking a little bit about natural rubber. Here's just a graph that, that typically people get when they do tension tests at different temperatures on a piece of rubber. This is data from an article that you see in the bottom right corner here. And if you look carefully at this, you can see that there is something odd going on here. It looks like the data perhaps is very scattered and perhaps there's some experimental errors or something. After all, the, the lowest the temperature is the stiffest and then it softens. But then the, the line with the lowest stress, the yellow one, is kind of in the middle. Like, what is this? What is going on with this data? And this is pretty common when you do testing on rubbers to get data that looks like this. And it's also all, often causes some confusion about is this good data? Is there a quality issue, etc. You can also plot the data from, from that data set in a different way. So this is still natural rubber. And I plotted stress versus temperature. So this is a little odd, perhaps. But if you go uh, with increasing temperatures, um, you see that the stress values for a given strain tends to go down a little bit here, depending on the strain value. So it seems to be softening in this particular case with natural rubber, uh, as we often see. But if we look at an unfilled silicone, so here's another material that behaves very differently here. So this is a modulus. It's actually the storage modulus, but the Young's modulus would be the same. It's a function of temperature. And from a very, very low temperature, we see that the, the Young's modulus is very large, 300 plus megapascals. It's a glassy material. So we are below the glass transition temperature here. Clearly, as we go through the glass transition temperature, the material will soften. We see a huge drop in in uh, tangent modulus here with increasing temperature. So far, so good. This is what we would expect the material to behave like. But then if we zoom in for the range between, say, fifth, 0 and 150 degrees C, and plot that to the right, we'll see that in that domain, as the temperature increases, the modulus actually increases. This is the, the weird behavior that I mentioned earlier. Another figure that is really nice that demonstrates this carefully is, is shown here. There are a number of different cyclic tests, loading followed by unloading, plotting engineering strain versus a stretch here. And we'll take a look at the, the highest temperature, 150 degrees C. Uh, it's very stiff and has very little hysteresis, load and unload. If we go to a colder temperature, say, the black one, minus 60, we see that the stiffness is lower and it has more hysteresis. So that's very common. And this is what we see for certain materials, certain rubbers, in this case, an unfilled silicone rubber. But the question now is, why is this? Why is this material behaving so weird? And to answer that, we need to dive in into a little bit of chain mechanics, uh, polymer chain mechanics. Uh, and uh, here's Here's a schematic that is part of my book that I wrote a few years ago called uh, Mechanics of Polymers. And the figure here is, is a random walk chain. So there has two ends to this uh, chain. The molecule uh, all has, in this way, case, equal length for each uh, monomer. And it's freely jointed. And then you can move this around, obviously. And you do a random walk from end to end. And it turns out, the rubbers, since they're above the glass transition temperature, can be approximated using this molecular chain representation. And the key here is to talk about something called the Helmholtz free energy. So the Helmholtz free energy is the sum of the entropies of the individual molecular chains. And by doing these um, simple chain models, we can calculate in closed form the entropy of, uh, of this system. So uh, that's done using this statistical mechanics equation. So the entropy is given by the configuration uh, of the molecular uh, uh, molecules that you're looking for. And uh, you can show 
uh, and that was done by Flory some time ago, that this is the, the main equation that drives the, the probability space. And uh, it turns out you can simplify this equation and come up with, with basically a, a very precise uh, equation for the Helmholtz free energy for uh, that configuration. And one can show that the free energy then has two parts. One has the energy part, and one is the entropy part, as shown here. And the entropy is determined by the configurational space of the molecules. And as you stretch out your mole molecules, you reduce the entropy because you reduce the number of op uh, possibilities for the molecules to be in. So by reducing the, the possible configurations, you will uh, change the entropy in that way, you reduce the entropy. And that's contributing to the free energy of the rubber itself. And uh, that's interesting because you see that the, the entropy here uh, is in this energy equation by multiplying it with the absolute temperature, theta zero. And by doing these kinds of arguments, one can show and calculate uh, the energy and entropy related uh, for uh, different uh, hyperelastic uh, some material models like the Arita Boys eight chain model. And here's an equation for a single chain. This is how much force it would take to stretch a single molecular chain. According to this theory, you'll see that it has a Langevin function. It's a very nonlinear function that determines uh, based on the stretch of the molecule. But then it's proportional to the temperature. And that's really the key for my argument here. When we're talking about rubbers, the force the entropy contributes to the force by a proportionality to the absolute temperature. So we go back to this image here again that I showed a minute ago. We'll see that, well, uh, once we're above Tg, um, we have a situation that if the material is driven and dominated by entropy change, then the modulus should increase with temperature and there should be a constant slope like this. And that's what we see. That's what was seen in this particular case for an unsealed, uh, unfilled silicon rubber. So to summarize, for rubbers, when you increase the temperature, there are two factors that contribute to what happens to the response. One is the energy that's stored in the material, and one is the entropy that's changing as the material is being stretched out. The energy is often dictated by fillers and, and uh, energetic effects associated with the filler, filler and molecule interactions. The entropy itself is just a configuration of them. So depending on what kind of rubber it is, these two effects will be active at once. And sometimes the energy is uh, dominating, and then you will see that the modulus decreases with temperature. Sometimes entropy is dominating, then it will increase. So these two effects, it will control the ultimate temperature dependence of your rubber material. So that's how it works. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.